We have gone through a lot of point counterpoint there, listening to the prosecution opening statement and the defense opening statement in the Jason Van Dyke case out of Chicago, the murder trial of a former Chicago cop who's facing a series of charges related to the death of 17-year-old Laquan McDonald. Mark Aguilar is an attorney who joins us regularly here on the Law and Crime Network. He's joining us now to help break this down. Mark, good to see you. Nice to see you, Aaron. Thanks for having me on. Okay, so what do you make of this? We have the defense here saying that this was an abnormal act that Laquan McDonald was committing by walking down the middle of the street. The prosecution saying that the only thing he's really doing wrong is being a black boy with the audacity to ignore the police. Those are direct quotes. Which side do you uh, give the most credit to here? Yeah, that rubbed me the wrong way. Um, you know, walking while black is, is now a, a crime. Come on. Um, that's what the defense has to portray this as, but it didn't resonate with me. Again, I'm not on that jury, and I come to the table of 25 years of criminal experience, both as a prosecutor and a defense lawyer. I wouldn't be on that jury. I don't know what they're thinking. But that, well, that, was, that was the state that said that the state is trying to color the police officer as making that judgment that his only crime was being a, a, quote, black boy with, quote, the audacity to ignore the police. That was the state trying to color the officer as a guy who makes poor judgments. Well, that's all that the officer knew at the time. And I like what the state did by saying the fact that he was on PCP or he had a troubled childhood, which is code for probably multiple arrests, you know, during his life. Um, took away the argument that the defense is going to make later on, you know, to try to devalue his life or to suggest erroneously that the officers knew about those things at the time. They didn't. So all you see is a black boy walking down the street. And really, when did that become a crime? Now, we're looking at the video again here, Mark. At one point, he kind of swings his right arm, and then right before the shots ring out, he starts to move it again. Is that enough for an officer very quickly here to believe that his life could be in danger? Maybe. I, I don't think so. Maybe, but may maybe. So, so is the defendant going to have to take the stand here to explain what's going on in his head? I think it's going to be necessary. I think that they cannot... Uh, rely upon that defense lawyer who candidly is doing the best he can at his level of awareness, but he paced around and made me nervous while he was up there. Um, I think you're going to need the defendant to take the stand, connect with the jurors, have tears in his eyes and say, I wish I could go back. I, I wish that it, I wasn't in that position, but I was. And I would do it again because I reasonably feared that he was going to do something and try to convince these jurors. You know, it might be uh, what the defense is going to have to ultimately result to when this trial picks up with the defense case in chief on Monday. Mark, I know we'll be back to talk about this more as the afternoon ticks along. Again, we will take a quick break here on the Law and Crime Network. More in the Jason Van Dyke murder case when we return in a moment. Prosecution witness there on the stand in the Jason Van Dyke murder case from Chicago. Again, a former police officer facing murder charges related to his actions shooting and killing a 17-year-old suspect who was walking down a street while that officer was on duty. Mark Aguilar is still on the line with me here on Law and Crime. So, Mark, we heard a lot from the expert there, but the bottom line is he says this guy was not justified, but he did say one interesting thing. He said that when Laquan McDonald went down, the threat ended. My guess is that the defense is going to take some serious issue with that. Well, that's what I would argue, and I have argued in the past. Whether it's two shots or whether it's 50 shots, it doesn't matter. The defense would try to have you believe because, you know, he's neutralizing the threat. The threat goes down. And once he's dead, it doesn't matter how many bullets. He's not charged with excessive force. We saw that in his opening. Problem is the defense is saying it goes to his mindset. Look at what he's doing here. He's executing. He's not avoiding a threat. He's not neutralizing a threat. It's not necessary. His mindset is one of execution. That could be one way that the prosecution could characterize this. And this perhaps is getting us into the area of why we saw such fireworks in objections earlier in this case, because it's contested by the prosecution and the defense exactly when the victim died here. We saw a lot of back and forth about that. Did he die there in the street or did he die on the way to the hospital or actually at the hospital? There's some it, evidence that he had a pulse in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, but we've got it, a big back and forth about when he died here and it led to some pretty harsh uh, objections and some pretty harsh uh, rebuking by the judge. It's only relevant if jurors find 
that he was even justified in shooting to begin with, with both prosecution experts says he was not. And so far, that's kind of my opinion, really, you, 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 it was necessary. Necessary means they needed to do it. There was no alternative. And I think that if you change the facts and have the guy lunging towards the officers with a knife, I'd say that makes it necessary. This was different, as the experts say. He's walking away. I tried to stay neutral, by the way, Aaron. But now, as I'm seeing, I'm seeing more and more. I'm like, I can't buy into that. I'm, I'm, I'm e I'll keep an open mind, but I'm eager to hear why or how the the, the cop could claim that it was necessary. I'm waiting to hear that explanation myself, Mark. And uh, look, I appreciate your attempt to stay unbiased in this case. Um, it's a tough one. It's a very tough one because the video really contradicts what the officer said. We'll be back with more analysis of the Jason Van Dyke case in Chicago when we return from this break.